So I'm just going to talk about the um, special populations with regards to training. So the first one we're going to discuss is high blood pressure. Um, so obviously, first of all, when it comes to high blood pressure, you need to ensure that you have a clearance from the doctor for the client to participate in any exercise program. Um, so exercise has been proven to be very beneficial to someone with high blood pressure. Around about 30, 30 minutes of um, lower intensity cardio exercise daily can be quite beneficial and has been proven to aid in reducing high blood pressure, which is really great. Um, it's also really important for you to understand if the client is taking any medications for high blood pressure, as some of these medications can have um, some side effects when it comes to exercise. So you need to be uh, very clear on if the customer or client is taking any um, medication with regards to high blood pressure. Um, so when doing exercises um, in a training program for someone with high blood pressure, it's quite important to try and keep um, things such as the hands uh, below the head level and feet below the heart. So um, as this creates extra pressure on the heart. So um, for doing things such as overhead shoulder press, um, that wouldn't be recommended for someone with high blood pressure. And doing things like leg press where they're sitting down and their legs um, are pushing against the weight, therefore um, their feet would be going over their heart, which again puts extra pressure on the heart um, and isn't ideal at all for someone that has high blood pressure. It's also really important that the customer, the client doesn't hold their breath um, and that when you're training them that you remind them to breathe and keep their breathing in and out and they're not holding their breath as again this puts extra pressure on the heart. Um, and it's also quite important with high blood pressure that the client doesn't stop exercise suddenly, uh, that they do a cool down session as, cause this, as this can have some adverse effects on them also. Um, then to move on to a lower back pain, um, it's really important um, to avoid exercises with regards to the lower back if they're having lower back issues uh, as this affects the lumbar vertebrae and the sacral vertebrae. So uh, you'd want to avoid exercises such as squats, deadlifts um, or anchored uh, sit-ups as this puts pressure on the lower back. Um, so you want to avoid anything that's um, bending at the hips instead of bending at the knees. Uh, so what you could do as an alternative would be a fit ball squat as this takes the pressure off the lower back um, or you could do sit-ups with elevated feet as an example as this again takes the pressure off the lower back. And it's quite important when you're dealing with someone with lower back pain that you uh, try to build their core over time as building the core strength will then remove that pressure from the lower back. Then moving on to someone with a knee injury. Um, so obviously you would want to avoid exercises where you're putting strain on the knee, especially things such as weighted squats or lunges, uh, as this puts a lot of pressure on the knee. Um, you would, it would be more beneficial for the client as there is other options to do uh, leg exercises, but things such as um, you know a gentle exercise would be to do a bridge as this works on the glutes, but you're not putting pressure on the knees. Okay, so we're going to do um, a stretch for the pectoral muscle today. So this is quite an easy stretch to do, um, but it's really effective. So all we're doing is we're putting our hand out against something, um, you know, such as a door frame or a pole like we've got here, just slightly elevated from your shoulder. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna turn your body away and you're going to slightly pull forward. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna stretch this muscle through here, which is your pectoral muscle. And um, after doing the push-ups, this is a really beneficial stretch to do. So you're just going to lean forward and feel that pulling through, stretching that muscle. Not to the point where it hurts, but just, you just need to feel that gentle stretch across your muscle. Just hold that there and then bring it back. And then obviously we would swap sides, doing the other arm as well, pulling that muscle through and giving it a nice stretch. And you're going to hold this for about 30 seconds. So I'll get you to do that for me. So arm out, yep, fantastic. Just lower your arm just a little bit. So you'd want it just above your shoulder height. Yep, that's great. And then just stretch yourself forward a little bit. Fantastic. Now, can you feel that stretching yeah. through? Yeah, definitely. Yep. And if you want to get more of a stretch, you just sort of twist your body away from your arm a little bit more. But like I said, don't do it to the point that it hurts. It just needs to be comfortable and so that you can feel that stretch pulling across Okay, so you need to hold that for about 30 seconds. 
just a little bit longer and we'll pull that through. Fantastic. Very good. Okay, and I'll get you to swap sides for me. Just raise your arm just a little bit more. That's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Great job. Just pushing forward with your shoulder. And can you feel that stretching across again? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Fantastic. Like I said, if you need to get a bit more of a stretch, just push your shoulder slightly forward. Fantastic. Okay. Good job. Okay, so we're going to do a quadricep muscle stretch um, now, which is really beneficial after you've been doing exercises such as the squats that we've done today. Um, so when you're doing these um, stretches, once you've got your balance and you know, you're quite good at doing these, you can do it unassisted. But when you're beginning, it's always handy to have something to hang on to, um, just to assist you with your balance. So what you're going to do is you're basically just going to hold onto your foot and bring it behind your body like this. And you're going to pull your foot up not too hard because you're not trying to get the stretch through by pulling your foot up as such but you should start to feel a bit of a stretch through here through your quadricep now to extend that stretch you're going to push forward through your hip and that will start to bring more of a stretch through this muscle so when you're doing that as well remember keep your shoulders back head forward good strong stance but you're stretching that through and like I said push your hip forward slightly and that's going to give you an additional stretch through that quadricep muscle okay so just hold that for around about 30 seconds pushing your hip forward to get a better stretch and then just slowly releasing that down obviously you're going to do that on the other leg as well because you want to evenly stretch your body so you want left and right stretch um, so i'll get jared to do that for me fantastic yep so hang on to that grab your foot fantastic and if you need to feel extra set to push through your hip. So can you feel that going through the front of your quadricep there? Yeah, definitely. Yep. And if you just push your hip a little bit further, you can get a bit more of a stretch. If you don't feel that you need to, you don't have to. It's just really good if you feel like you're not getting enough stretching through that muscle. Fantastic. And swap sides. Okay. That's it. Just feeling a good stretch through that quad. Push through your hip a little bit just to extend that stretch a little bit more. Fantastic. And you can feel that pulling through there and stretching yeah, that definitely. muscle through. Feels good. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Good job. Okay. Thank you very much.